What's up, Twitch chat and YouTube? It is finally the afternoon of the possibly less last ever vintage showcase event. Uh, season two is the only remaining showcase for vintage in 2021. Uh, so we have this showcase and maybe one or two last chance qualifiers to get people qualified. And then the 24 or 25 player event that will qualify one player to the mocks. Uh, we're going to play the same deck that we've been practicing in the Mana Traders. This is our Dress Down PO deck. I've been very, pretty happy with it. I don't know if very happy is the right word. We've been, I've been pretty happy with it. We haven't won that much in the, the Mana Traders, but um, Kane's been doing decently well with it, and I like all of it in theory. So we're going to try it out again today. Just um, basically a, a, a heavy island version of Pio with four de dress down in like the cantripping flex slot. This like doubles as removal against all the permanent based, you know, hate bears. And uh, minimal win cons. We're just looking at Karn, Yogwill, Citadel. Though we do have a Sphinx because we're hedging pretty hard against a uh, bug. I've actually kind of liked having the double Tinker target in the main. Both of them are fairly castable. Obviously, Sphinx is a lot harder to cast than Citadel. Um, but we've definitely won a fair number of games hard casting Sphinx. It does still pitch to force. This does make it so if we draw one of them, we still have a Tinker target. Uh, overall, I've been reasonably happy with the double uh, Tinker targets. So, yeah. I don't, um, the only changes since the Mana Traders is the Thirst for Knowledge slash Dig Through Time got cut for repeal because Thirst for Knowledge was never good and Dig Through Time wasn't castable. I've also just switched back to the normal Karn artifact suite of two Needle, one Lantern, one Crypt. Just so I have a little flexibility on my Karn and so that I have answers to the graveyard that are, you know, after... If the Bazaar was answered, then I have, you know, follow-up answers to the graveyard, so... We're going to hop right in to round one of this Vintage Showcase event. Let's begin. Uh, yeah, this hand's fairly garbage. Obviously, P.O. is not very good here, and the Sphinx is not very good here, and the Yagwa is not very good here, so we're just going to look for a better six. Um, this one is not fantastic either. We getting dressed up today? No, only dressed down. Thanks for the 13 months, Eric. Echoing truth is for everything. <laughs> everything that's not a land, I guess. Um, so this is such a weird hand, because like P.O. is showing why P.O. is not exactly a great magic card here, where it's basically a four mana do nothing. I can put back this Sphinx, but do I really want to keep a hand that is three lands, a dead opal, and a dress down? I can't imagine that would be the case. I think we would rather just go to five and look for a higher roll hand. Our opponent looks like they're double queuing the mo the modern challenge, so this could be you know back and forth. I'm just gonna mulligan this hand. This like obviously this is why you keep mulliganing. We have the power of London on our side, though without London this would also be very good five. Um. Or just go for the turn one tinker. It is uh interesting. So maybe we don't go for the turn. <sighs> it's so so awkward here. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of emerald and opal. That way I have. Oh, let's see. Hold on. I could actually get rid of soul ring now there's no way i can play a narsa on turn one that doesn't get rid of tinker right i could get rid of soul ring and tinker and then i could play narsa so my opponent is on um hollow vine so actually turn one narsa is like pretty lights out but also turn one Sphinx is pretty lights out, but you also don't really want to run into Mind Break Trap. So here's a hard problem. You can't play around everything. You don't really want to run into Mind Break Trap, but you also don't want to pass the turn with a couple mocks in and then have it get Force of Vigored. <laughs> so you only can choose, you know, something. So I, I think my answer to this is Pitch Opal, Pitch Emerald, go Jet, Soul Ring, Tinker for a Sphinx. Uh, if that, you know, Tinkering off, Soul Ring, and then if I draw a land, or I can maybe play a Narset. 
Well, I can't keep Opal because I have to put two cards away. So I can't like pitch Soul Ring Jet because then my Opal doesn't do anything. And I guess I could get rid of this land and I could go Jet, Soul Ring, Opal, Tinker, but that doesn't even seem better. Yeah, I'm just going to go with what I, my, the first thing I said here. Maybe my opponent... Okay, my opponent kept six cards. I'm just going to take her a Sphinx and hope it works, I think. That at least plays around Vigor. Tinker Sphinx plays around Vigor, whereas not casting anything plays around Mind Break Trap. And nothing plays around Force of Negation. Unfortunately, Soul Ring does play into Mental Mista, but there was no way for us to abandon the Soul Ring and keep both threats. Theoretically, we could have gone like... Maybe we could have pitched S Strand, Soul Ring, and then kept all of the Moxin and just gone for a Tinker, and, but then I lose a blue source anyways, so I don't like that. Putting back Soul Ring. Oh, I guess we just only needed three. Yeah, I guess we probably should have just played Emerald Jet Strand Tinker. Yeah, I think the Soul Ring's kind of bad. Because I'm probably getting rid of the Soul Ring anyways, because the Black Source is more important. So like, this Soul Ring is just um, a misplay. It should just be Emerald. I'm not tinkering for Citadel. I believe I'm tinkering for Sphinx. The upside of Tinkering for Sphinx is I plays around Vigor completely. And my opponent has already pitched a Will and a Trap. So I think playing around Vigor makes the most sense. Yeah, this misstep is... This, this Soul Ring is really bad. The Soul Ring is really, really bad. There was no... I, I don't know why I tanked on not being able to go Emerald Jet Tinker, but... Oh well, uh, I did that to myself, so if my soul ring gets misstepped, uh, whoops. <laughs> Exclamation mark F6 or something. Uh... Oh, glad I didn't buy tickets to the LCS finals. Obviously, that's getting canceled. It's okay. Once my opponent comes back from playing Modern, we'll have a jolly good time. It's gonna be sad that after we <laughs> you know wait for our opponent to come back from their modern turn, we just like get misstepped or something and, and then we die. <laughs> but we mold a five and our five card hand is very good. But and this is this is just a glaring mistake looking me looking me directly in the eye. I just don't know why I thought I couldn't play Tinker off of Jet Emerald, but uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead with the basic island so that I can't, ha there's like no timing windows where I get vigored. Resident Sleepers. I don't know, Slasher. I was told by all the Zoomers that Doomsday is not a good deck, so... Losing to not a good deck? Pretty sus. All the Zoomers. I was told in the hive mind that Doomsday is not a good deck and no one should play it. 
heard it's pretty bad right now. It feels like they would have f 6 if they had no plays, so that's not a good sign. But my opponent has made, you know, no gameplay actions besides Serum Powder, and they've used six minutes of their clock. Because the double Q. All right, well, it resolved. Like I said, I think getting rid of Soul Ring is better because I think Jet lets us cast more spells. All right, Force Check. This is a <laughs> Vine Break Trap, yeah, of course. So the problem is I just, like, can't... I guess I could typically... I could, I could theoretically cast Jet and no Soul Ring and pass and then go Soul Ring Tinker on the next turn, but I just think that's so bad. But... I mean, one of their three Mind Break Traps after... I guess one of their remaining two Mind Break Traps, probably. Unlucky. I don't know. I don't think I was supposed to play around Mind Break Trap, so... I just get, I just get got, you know? This matchup is atrocious, by the way. I, I think this matchup is really, really difficult. We're pretty much 0% to win this game now. Especially with them having a squee and a bazaar. But there's really just like nothing we can do. We mold to five, made our play. <laughs> Classic. Like I said, you could play around my, my break trap there. I just think like giving them a bazaar activation is pretty silly. We could have just gone Island Soul Ring Pass, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a strong play to me. Could also get, like, that also opens yourself up to getting Force of Vigor. Noxious Wasteland Squee. Second Bazaar. Um. Let's see. If my opponent has no more creatures this turn, and we draw an island, Narset's not the worst thing. It's okay. The Zoomers will also tell you that this deck is bad, so... Can't really trust them anymore. <laughs> okay, sure. It's a little unfortunate that we have Lotus instead of any other uh no i'm talking about hollow vine um i really don't want to use like the lotus because it's like my key to casting sphinx but oh look at that my opponent has count has countered anything i've tried to done this game and played a free creature hi i don't know this matchup is just so bad. <laughs> Someone was like saying in, in the Discord the other day that they're like, oh, I don't know how to win the 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 bizarre matchup or the 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 squee matchup versus <laughs> fucking versus PO. And I'm just like, I take actions at random. Strip mine my island. Hilarious. Find a hollow one. Like if you yeah i kind of agree if you're just uh don't have wastelands it basically this deck is impossible to beat the only way you can beat it is if it mulligans to zero yeah i mean <laughs> so silly i still hate that this deck exists it feels like kind of ridiculous to me but I don't even think it matters that they're going to double Q and, like, use 10 minutes on their clock to take zero game actions because they just win so fast, right? Like, this is three three attacks or four attacks or whatever. Four attacks. My favorite is when I fetch an island and get strip mine, too. 
It's off to a good start. Yeah. The, the problem with like playing around Mind Break Trap is it lets them have an extra bizarre activation to find force of any kind. Just doesn't really work out in the end. Yeah, okay, sure. Like I said, this matchup, is, you don't have very much agency as the PO player. And we mulligan to easily our best hand on five. If we had kept our six or seven card hands, we would have snap lost the game. So we put ourselves, I think we played like really well because we put ourselves in the, besides keeping the soul ring, that was bad. But like we, our mulligans put us in a position that where we could actually win this game. Whereas our if we kept seven or six, we would have just lost this game. Yeah, I mean, as I said, just game actions. You're probably supposed to hold the second hollow one so that you can trigger your revenge vines on the next turn, but it doesn't really matter when you have like triple squee going, so. So this game, which was basically two decisions, took us 16 minutes to finish. If we played this game in a, a vintage league, it would say one minute. Win in one minute. <laughs> when I played my Holovine League, I spent the same amount of time playing matches as I did in queue. It took me 31 minutes of game time and 31 minutes of queue time and finish my league in an hour or in two minutes. <laughs> Pretty silly. All right, we are teched out a little bit here though. We have, you know, we already, we had a Sphinx in the main, which would have been game winning. Uh, we have a bunch of hole breachers. We've got needles and soul guide lanterns and all kinds of goodies here. Um, could theoretically keep repeal for the chalice. Karn is pretty useless. Dress down is quite bad. I think I think we made great bulleting decisions in our first and our and our five card hand was definitely the best thing we could have had. So, I mean, we had we had turn one win the game. They have to have interaction, and they had interaction. So, they're like on a on a five card mulligan, I think that's pretty good. Um, we don't actually care about misstep in this matchup because we don't care about Noxious Revival because we don't actually have Wastelands. So. This looks good. Sphinx as a Tinker Target is uh, pretty common at the moment just because there are a lot of decks in the format that can't beat it. Uh, like our opponent's deck. In game one, if, we, if our Tinker had resolved and we put a Sphinx in the play, they actually have zero outs and are going to lose. So... So the thing is, like, Misstep is historically not good against Hollow Vine, except now, if you are playing a Wasteland deck, you do want to keep in Misstep because their number one way to play around Wasteland is uh, Noxious Revival. So it's not good here, and that's why I boarded out Mental Misstep, but you actually should be keeping in Mental Misstep against Hollow Vine if you're a Wasteland deck. I think is interesting. Um, we have a force and a needle, so I'm going to keep this hand. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to look to time walk or anything. I think I'm just going to get an island and cast needle to play around trap. I think I'll pitch time walk if this didn't get if this if I have to use my force. 
Um, is there any reason to play things out here? I don't want to get hit by vigor plus traps, so no. Like if my opponent go, if I play a Mox Ruby and my opponent goes end of turn vigor and then I force it, then they can trap my force. I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. Why not? I, I mean, what, why do I bother playing four islands in my deck? I swear. <laughs> Every time I play four islands and I get strip mined, I just cry. So much crying. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Oh, pitch the root wall out of madness. Yep. That's a good one. All right. I don't think they have anything because they're F6. So I'm just going to go for it. Nope. They were not actually F6. Never mind. Okay. All right, so I've already played into Mindbreak Trap, so there's no reason not to keep going. I probably shouldn't have done that, but I felt like I should do something. Maybe that was bad. That was probably not the strongest play I've ever made, but now I can snap Ancestral, and that feels good. Ooh, I can hold up Flusterstorm forever, too. All right, we don't need to snap Ancestral yet. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep Island and Pio. I should have taken the Pio, so I had another blue card to pitch to Force. But this game is very one. I've got a Flusterstorm and a Force and a Snap Ancestral and a Pio, so it's just... Uh, very over for my opponent. Obviously, they can pitch like some 1-1s one here, but I don't think it matters very much. Like eventually, I'll just cast the Sphinx and the game will be over. Uh, no, they probably have a Bazaar of Baghdad. I just have a Needle Naming Bazaar, so they're going to hand size to pitch the Ruwallas. I'm not even going to block, because I would rather be able to pick up my Snapcaster Mage with Pio. Oh, that thing actually blocks, which is nice. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I don't really uh, see a way they can. I can lose this game at the moment, so. This is the dredge guy. The modern dredge guy. They're done. That's why they're that's why they're doubling up on the modern challenge. Everything makes sense now. All right, so they had a trap for us in game one. In game two, we had a needle that was never uh, dealt with. I think two pretty <laughs> non interactive games. Let's just run it back. I don't really like more fluster storms than than two here. You should try, try playing some Doomsday Slasher. That has a lot of interaction in it. All right, so my opponent... 
Uh, powdered away their strip mine. Our islands are finally safe. Uh, and they also mold the six. We're going to follow and mulligan. This hand has no powerful plays as well as no interaction. This hand has interaction, but no mana. Uh, my opponent kept their six card hand, unfortunately. Unfortunate that I can't keep this, but I guess we're going to go to five again. <laughs> uh, I just want to play magic, but I keep just mulliganing to oblivion. Like, put back a land, underground sea, time walk, underground sea, mana vault. I still have to draw an opal and have no vigor. It just doesn't work. Doesn't want, just doesn't work. It's not a keepable hand. All right, I guess I'm going to go to four. Yep, that's my best hand. Um, three cantrips in an island is not what you want to see against Hollow Vine, but uh, I don't know. We've mulliganed uh, five times in this three game set, so or maybe it was six times. I don't know if we mulliganed in our game too, but not much. They they boarded in endurance. Wild. I, that hits exactly Snapcaster and Yogwell. Sure. You got it, homie. Are we supposed to hold this Ancestral? I don't think so. I'm just going to cast it on their upkeep to play around Negation. Yo, thanks for the host, Archon. You have a you have a misstep? <laughs> uh, I hate vintage so much. All right, well, what's a guy to do? No, we know they don't have a strip mine. They powdered it away. I just <laughs> I don't know why I expected the tournament to go any other way than this, but. All right, they did hit a squee here. Thankfully, they don't have a hollow one, so the clock isn't incredibly fast. Uh, is it better to brainstorm on their turn or to ponder on our turn? I feel like we're just supposed to cast brainstorm right now. Oh, no, I definitely don't want to play any Legacy. I'll tell, you, tell you that much. Definitely have no interest in playing any Legacy. No, you can't actually counter the Root Wallace to stop the Vine. Vine is just on cast. This is still a winnable game. This is definitely still a winnable game. My opponent is on fairly low resources, but they do still they do have a squee. Don't have a hollow one. Like it's still like we could still draw our, our way out of this game on our mold of four, but or sorry, our mold of five maybe. I don't remember. It was another four. Nice. Yeah. I mean, we have outs, so maybe we'll draw them with this Brainstorm. Or maybe our Brainstorm will get Force Negated. So, we'll see. <laughs> uh yes fantastic all right well yeah i mean i could draw a whole breacher that would be pretty good
Well, I guess I'm glad my brainstorm didn't resolve. No, I fashion. Never mind. <laughs> I, I just want to play magic, please. That's such a long time away. This vampiric is so long away. I don't think I see my opponent having any fury in their deck. So if we resolve a whole reacher, it might be winning. Top decking jet doesn't do anything for us. We have a flooded strand. It's just too. It's just like I have to draw another turn. Give them a. They get two bizarre activations before I could theoretically play. Oh, okay, they hit Squeevenge fine, and they didn't even pit. Oh, they didn't pitch their Master of Death, which makes me think they probably have Force of Will. Unfortunate, really. Okay, well, at least this gets the Force of Will. Like, I think it's very likely they have Force of Will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. All right. So they're on zero cards. They have a Squee and a Vengevine. They should... Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think we're winning here. If they hit, like, Root Walla Hollow one here, we just instantly die, right? Okay, they hit double squee. Okay, so I should just get a a hull a hull breacher, right? I think a hull breacher should be winning here. We could also go Yogwill and get Needle. No, that's not good. Let's just get a hull breacher. Should I try to wait until they activate? Or should I just do it now? I don't think we're allowed to wait. I guess I should have done it on my turn. So now that they could theoretically hit two root wallas, but they only have four root wallas in their deck. No, they have one card in their hand chat. They can't force of will this. They can get rid of the one card in their hand in an attempt to find root wallas. I didn't I didn't wait and like give them an opportunity to activate Bazaar to find forces. Uh I don't know. Like I kind of think that uh, okay. So they found a hollow one. It's probably not good for me. I, I just can't. I can't win, man. How do I win this game? I have to draw a Tinker now? Bravo. I don't know. I don't feel like I've ever had a hollow, hollow vine game where I have the cards that I need to win the game. It just feels like they always have everything they need and I don't have shit. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Like they just naturally drew hollow vine there or hollow one there. For their turn. And if they had drawn a turn later, I would have Force of Will. It's just like... <laughs> I can't catch a break, right? Alright, if I draw Tinker here, I probably still win the game. <laughs> I 
What am I? I just would like. I mean, I have a lot of dead draws in my deck, right? Like, I have PO is a dead draw. I have about infinite dead draws in my deck as well, so. I get it. It's my deck is not really suited for a top deck war here, but I did turn off all of their draw spells as well. So it's just like, come on. <laughs> I just, I don't know, man. What a joke. I cast three cantrips in the game and they just <laughs> countered everything. Oh, yeah, that's the one. It's just the hollow one draw after they're locked out of activating Bazaar was just like peak, peak hollow vine versus Justin magic. Oh, well. All right, welcome to round two of the Vintage Showcase. We got to win seven straight matches of magic. Very, very doable. I don't remember the last time I won seven straight matches of Magic, but uh, we're going to give it our best shot. We're up against uh, Super Cat here. Uh, usually a Golos player, so we got to keep our starting hand with uh, Workshops in mind. Tsubasa Cat. Say that wrong? Tsubasa Cat. Whoops. Yeah, this hand not keepable, obviously. Not only do we have a Flusterstorm, but we have no mana. All right, I'm gonna mulligan this hand, and <laughs> where are my basic islands? Uh, I don't really want to keep this hand either. I don't feel like he does things any anything powerful. Is susceptible to locks. I'm just rather go to five. Yeah, this is my best hand. Keep. We've done a lot of mulliganing already today, but what's a guy to do? Seven card workshop hand. Follow up is spy class. <laughs> yeah, all right. You got my flooded strand. This looks like maybe if they don't have a you know a a, a mox in, then we won't get sphered. So we can maybe play our mana vault and then get it revokered. Yep. Relic of Progenitus. Interesting. The Cho Dayman school. Oh, yeah. Force of Will, no blue cards. Yeah, yeah. I'm not... <laughs> I did put away a flood, uh, an Underground Sea because theoretically Strand should be better against, you know, the Ghost Quarter Wasteland deck. Uh, but obviously, the, <laughs> the Spy Glasses. The exception, of course. Yes. Why not? Maybe I won't play all eight rounds today. <laughs> Maybe I won't play all eight rounds today. Yeah, I don't know. Now they have a, uh, infinite tutors once they get one more mana. It's a Golos. Gonna have to counter that. So best be hoping there's a blue card in our top three. We are very likely to have a blue card in our top three. Yep.
Well, they're out of cards, so they're top decking. They currently don't have the mana to loop fares, which is nice. But they do have a uh, relic that they could crop. They could prop. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should have. I think I meant to, but I just didn't. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely meant to put Fluster on top. I just didn't. But I'm not really planning to draw it. I'm going to just uh, play my top and then untap and play Demonic Tutor for Ancestral, play Opal and cast Ancestral. But then I'll probably draw the Fluster, so did it to myself, I guess. Cracking this, which means they're pretty likely to find a mana source to start looping fares. The minute they start looping fares, we're pretty much just stone cold dead. We're also dead to a Golos. We're dead to uh, most things. Oh, yep. All right, so now they can loop fares. Uh, I assume that they could just start by getting Trinisphere. Or Golos, they have five mana now. It just doesn't really matter that we what we pitched up for us because we're just going to lose to every card off the top. God Pharaoh's statue. Yeah, all right, cool, you got me. All right, well, we're going to bring in Blightsteel Colossus, and we're going to bring in Echoing Truth and Hercules Recall. And we're going to take out Fluster, Fluster, Misstep, Rest Down, Repeal, Citadel. I think there's like just no point in having a Citadel in my deck. It's we could play some Ambush Vipers if we wanted to. I don't really want to. We could play Needles if we wanted to. I don't really want to. I don't find myself needing to Needle in this deck against like a Wasteland because you just have pretty good protection against Wasteland. Like if I was playing Urza Saga, you probably have to bring in both Needles so that you don't get Wastelanded. But thankfully we're not playing that card. Like there are some cards that are not great here, but overall it's just fine. Narset's fine. I actually don't mind Narset. Like, obviously it's hard to cast, but there's a lot of times where you, like, counter their spells and you need a refill, and Narset lets you do that. Especially on the play, I think Narset's perfectly fine. Like, against uh, a Ravager Shops, I would definitely want you to board out Narset, but against the, the Golo Shops deck, I, I don't think it's that bad. You're not really playing it for its act uh it's passive at that point, you're playing for its uh active as double impulse. Alright, I'm just gonna jam this ancestral, see if we can't find some moxin. And a P.O. maybe? How about two Moxin and a P.O.? Alright, found a Moxin. We have Yagwath Will Recall. We have Snap Recall. We're in not a bad spot, but we're not going anywhere fast, so there are some problems. All right, another workshop seven card hand. What is the play off of it? Sure. I guess I could have played my fetch land instead of an island to help play around spyglass, but I just didn't really feel like that was super relevant, but I guess I should have. Whoops. 
All right, let's just snap a recall then. Uh, yeah, well, those aren't particularly good. I don't know. I I'm just playing like garbage because I'm very tilted, obviously. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There was no reason to tap a ruby, but I did anyways. Chose not to do the math. So we're currently only on five mana. Which means we can't cast Demonic Tinker. Yeah, I, I got uh I got punished for not fetching all the all the times where I could have fetched. Okay, I don't think I need both of these fetches anyways, so. You've named Scalding Tarn. Strip, strip mine. Strip mine. Yeah, sure. Got me. It'd be pretty hard for my opponent to stop us from tinkering at this turn. They would have to have a null rod. Though, if they have a null rod, it's pretty bad for me. No, this game's not over. They could easily play null rod and kill us. Because of the, uh... Because of the, because of the bad fetching. Though, I think if we had fetched on turn one, we still would have had a, uh, a fetch in hand. Maybe not. Sure, that doesn't stop us. If you just keep a hand that has like a bunch of mana and ancestral and a bunch of lands, it's usually pretty good enough. It's good enough to beat these Golos decks. They don't really do anything besides try to stop you from Casting your spells. So if you just have the resources to cast your spells, it's usually not a big deal. I do think that I'll probably get rid of the Mana Vault and not the Mana Crypt because the Mana Crypt is giving us tons and tons of mana here. Cool, we have Force Backup as well. Are they going to ghost quarter us in, their, in our draw step? That would be interesting. Uh, we don't have Sphinx. We would have to have top decked Plasteel. That would have been very unlucky, uh, <laughs> but pretty par for the course for uh, for us recently. Yeah, we could have definitely top deck Bright Steel and lost as well. Not much I can really do about that. Maybe he doesn't lose. Like, we could always find a Brainstorm or something like that. Or an Academy, maybe. All right. So, we did the thing, which is you just play a bunch of mana versus Golo Shop on the play and then tinker them. That is kind of the game plan. You also have like the ability to send their entire board into their hand with, with, with Hercules Recall. I should be a little more cognizant of my fetching to play around Spyglass. Goal of Stacks has played a lot less Spyglasses recently, so I have been not thinking about it as much, but it's definitely a misplay in both of our first two games. So I would rather not, I not make that misplay in game three. Yeah. 
That's a weird hand. Well, I mean, I, I think I play my best fetch configuration. Oh, maybe you're not talking about fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like, part of it is I just get lazy and don't feel like sh shuffling. <laughs> but I don't oh, okay. I like, I like, I mean, I think I play the best fetch configuration, but, uh, yeah, playing the fetches out of my hand is... It's really not very important, except against exactly Sorcerer's Spyglass, right? And that my opponent is one of the players on Sorcerer's Spyglass, so... This hand is weird, but I don't think it's a mulligan. We have a force for their first play, and if we draw a Moxin, we can Mystical for a Tinker. And we have a bunch of lands, so I, I really don't think this is a mulligan. Though you could obviously mulligan for better if you wanted to. That's a lot of Moxin. That's like a Mishra's Workshop. Except it's got a clock to it. If we draw a Black Lotus and Karn them, that would be lit. That would be so lit. Uh, okay. Yeah, it resolves. You got me. Sensei's top, I assume. Maybe they named Karn because Karn is the thing that loses them the game here. But... Needle is not a very good card against, um... I guess they could name Scalding Tarn or something, but... <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, you used to board out Needle against uh, P.O. a lot. Well, the last game they had, uh, Sorcerer's Spyglass was looks at my hand. This, they're just blind naming something that has artifact activated abilities. I fucking... <laughs> ah, yes. God bless the blind scalding tar name. I guess that's why they didn't name Top, because they did have a Revoker as well. Am, am, I'm like, come on, I have to be the most unlucky player. I, I have to be the most unlucky player, right? How does this happen? How? How does this fucking happen? <laughs> I don't know, man. I really... I don't think I'm supposed to probe them, chat. Well, gl glad you could catch the live stream because it's about to end. <laughs> it's about to end very quickly. Well, the nice thing is here, I could just mystical for Hercules Recall and completely reset their game. Which I kind of think I'm going to do. Like, they're going to make two constructs. I just Hercules recall their board and I reset the game. Obviously, it doesn't like advance our game plan, but it's probably worth. I don't know. We'll see. Like, we kind of have to have a Hercules at this point because of. How far behind we are. Maybe that's just like. Really bad. I don't know. This is the first thing that I thought about. Guess we'll find out if the last card in their hand is a wasteland. 
I do think I probably end up taking a... Uh, do I take a million damage? Are they going to choose not to activate their Saga? Because I got a Hercules Recall? That'd be interesting. You can just activate it with the Emeralds and they're going to get bounced back to the hand anyways. Should I tell them how to play their turns, I guess? <laughs> Graph Digger's Cage. Reasonable. Reasonable. Do I take a nice 12 here? I definitely think so. Another Saga. Uh, I used up all my luck in magic forever, so... Alright, goodbye, Saga Tokens. It's where we draw Time Twister, right? Alright, so this worked out pretty well. I think I'm just supposed to get both Underground Seas... No, nah, I can just get an island. Saga is just such a bad magic card. <laughs> uh, I guess they could make, you know, some 4-4s four here. Yeah, I mean, we're still in a lot of trouble. This is definitely true. But what are they going to do here? Just make a 4-4? Four four? They drew an Ancient Tomb off the top. It's pretty good, because now they can uh, play a Revoker as well. I probably have to force Revoker. I don't really have much in my cardboard anyways. I guess I can get a Needle on Saga. Which is kind of awkward. I mean, if they want to play two Revokers, that would be fine. I don't know. I think we're still, like, very dead. Not if they play a Revoker. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have to top deck out of this game. I guess they're just going to play a, a Graph Digger's Cage here, and it's pretty good. I don't really have too many draws. No, Tinker is not good because of Graph Digger's Cage. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. We're just going to die anyways because we don't have enough action because I tutored for a Hercules recall, which maybe I shouldn't have done. Oh, I mean, they're always going to choose to play cage there. Um, I guess I have to drop PO. This is a Golos? Oh, they drew a Lodestone. Okay. Mm, yeah, I don't really know how I'm going to win this game. I just don't really feel like I am. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe I should have mulliganed for a more powerful hand. I don't think that I would have mysticaled for a, in a Hercules recall if I hadn't gotten both of my, drawn both tarns against the blind name tarn i don't know it's just it's just not happening it's just not my day no needle's fine versus saga I just don't think Saga's a problem. Saga didn't really do anything. <laughs> it wasn't really Saga's fault. Uh... Alright, I have Snap Hercules, but I don't have the mana to play it. 
I am one mana short of playing Snap Urkels. That's pretty hilarious. Oh, I can't snap anyways because of Graph Digger's Cage, so it doesn't actually matter. Yeah, all right, cool. Dope. What a fun time. All right, well, another showcase, another catastrophe. I guess we'll try to fire a last chance qualifier. We played one bad matchup and one good matchup, and they both went basically horrific, really. We mulliganed to five and to six and to four and to five. Like, we just mulliganed a million times. Didn't really have high, high power hands and didn't really have the things we needed to win the game. So, not much to say, really. Like, I, there were like small things I could have done better. Uh, but in the end, I think uh, most of the lines that I took in general were fine. Like, none of the small things that we could have done better were going to get us wins. So. An unfortunate series of events. I still think this deck is okay, but you definitely don't really want to see Squee if you can help it, even if you're, like, pretty sideboarded for it. Like, five incredibly good cards and two okay cards. So I I like it's really hard to be more boarded for Squee with this deck. So yeah, I I think we were fairly unlucky today. I will definitely try to fire one both of the last chance or one of the last chance qualifiers. We'll see if we can't you know run a four zero. So the last chance qualifiers are what tomorrow at six p.m. and. Monday at midnight. So we'll try to fire the one tomorrow at 6 p.m. then. I don't think I'm going to stick around and stream the rest of this event. It doesn't really seem like a high EV play for me. I'm worried about the data, but it's probably not worth making my day, ruining my day over. So I'm going to probably just end the stream, send you guys over to a better streamer, and uh, go back to camping, I guess. I guess that's the plan. So. Thank you for watching. I uh, I don't know if those rounds were probably not super enjoyable to watch, but sometimes it'd be Tough like that. today, but enjoyable stream. Thanks for the support, and I will uh, see you next time.